right, we're live. Hello, everyone. We're back again with our first real learning quest of the year. Um, a series of live events to guide you in your real estate career. I'm Matt, and I have three special guests with me today. I have Mary Jones. Mark Gourlay is on her way. And I have Callum Angus with uh, us with me as well today. Today, our episode title is 10 Reasons Why Real Estate is the Career for You. Please, in the comments, feel free to leave any questions you have or any comments. Um, and we'll get to those if we have the time for them today. Um, Mary, I'd like for you to start us off. We're just talking about, you know, like I said, 10 reasons why real estate is maybe the career for you. So um, what's one reason that you would may have for any of our audience members watching today? Well, there's so many benefits, but the first one that I'd like to speak about is that you have the freedom to be your own boss. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, you have so much control over your business that uh, when someone, you know, completes their education to become a salesperson and they join a brokerage, well, this relationship is very different from an employer-employee relationship. And so you have much more freedom to, uh, to actually address what you, what you envision for this new career, for this business venture that you are then um, going ahead with. And so there is certainly a lot of guidance from the brokerage that you join with as to, you know, specific policies that they want a, a salesperson to be aware of and follow. And of course, always complying with necessary legislation. But there is such a wonderful opportunity to address the, you know, the specifics of the service that you wish to provide to the seller, to the buyer when, when you're representing them. Callum, what, what do you think about that? Yeah, that, that's a great point, Mary. Um, I, I think the biggest um, thing for me, so um, nice to meet you all guys virtually. Um, I've been in the business now. This is coming on for my sixth year. And I think the points that really stand out to me, the one, the one word that I say that, that really sort of epitomizes the benefits of real estate is flexibility. Um now, a few of the points I want to sort of touch on for me personally and in, in getting into the industry um, to have the flexibility to sort of have no ceiling on on your uh, remuneration. Um, that was a, a very attractive um, sort of proposition for me. Um, you, you, you all know you obviously from an industry standpoint, there are very successful agents. There are agents that. Um, are able to be flexible with kind of their schedules and stuff, which all en enables you to sort of be able to really set the, your sort of goal and your sort of ceiling as to where you want to be financially. Um, and then also sort of from a scheduling standpoint. But I think the big one for me would be um, being able to sort of have no ceiling on your remuneration. Um, as you know, and there are a number of jobs in, in, in the world where, um, there is kind of that ceiling that can be hit. Uh, de depends on what sort of walk of life you do. Um, but with with real estate, there really is that kind of lack of a ceiling to how much you're going to make. So for me, that was the big one that I went into, and um, it's definitely been something that um, I've really sort of liked and focused on. Well, you get to reap the rewards of all your effort and commitment that you make to the profession, right? And, and you were able to, um, you know, um, really continue to earn additional income with all that great attention and work that you put into your career. Yeah. And, and, and again, and you could probably speak a little bit more to this, Mary, but uh, sort of in the six years that I've been a realtor and that's another thing that sort of really speaks to the flexibility is people's personal lives change from, from day to day, month to month, year to year. Um, to have that flexibility of being able to ramp up and then also ramp down, which you don't necessarily get if you're in a 
traditional nine to five job where you have to sort of go in and you, you have a time that you have to be there and where work that sort of nine to five week schedule. Um, you don't have that in, in real estate. Now, I, I, I don't want to paint a picture that we're all sitting there not doing anything and we're doing a few hours of work here and there. It certainly isn't like that. But um, as an example, things happen in life, like personal situations. You might need to go pick up the children or you might need to take a couple of days off from work and stuff like that. And having that flexibility because it is your own business um, is really invaluable. I don't know what your thoughts are on that as well, Mary, but that I, was I totally agree with you. I, I think that this this career choice has been so good to me. I started in this business before I had children. And then as I, you know, did have children, then there was a, a need to also consider uh, their schedules as well. And so that I could adjust my scheduled appointments with sellers and buyers that would allow me to, you know, still balance um, my commitments at home as well. And so that was, that was, you know, so good. And the other, the other important issue, of course, is that this flexibility that you speak about is so wonderful that, you know, there could be specific things that are, um, important to you, you know, you have visitors, you know, that are coming in and spending time with you at certain times of the year, or that you are planning on, you know, very important events for yourself as well, and that you can actually schedule those things without the worry of trying to book time off from, um, from an employer that's you know, very, very different. I worked for the federal government before I got into real estate and of course, having to stop and make a request for specific time off. And it was, you know, sometimes unfortunately denied because of others that had already booked that time. Right. And, um, and, and so in real estate, um, Callum, when you're taking time off, what do you do? Would, like, so, do, do you make arrangements with others? For sure, yeah. I mean, obviously, as you can hear by my accent, I, I certainly wasn't born and raised in Canada. So um, just recently, um, I have two young children. So balancing the sort of summer holidays, as an example, that's always very challenging for a lot of people. My friends and family, we all have sort of children around the same age. I know that is always a, a major factor for people that are working more traditional jobs. And just having that flexibility of being able to go and pick them up at um, 4.30 from a summer camp, that, that that's great. Um, also, sort of, I've been having to travel home in the last couple of months just to sort of tie up loose ends with personal family uh, matters. And again, uh, uh, in traditional jobs, you do have time off, but there are times where it's sort of you need to drop things on a whim. And 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 again, the, the beauty with real estate from my personal standpoint is you are your own business, you are your own brand, um, which there comes with there comes a lot of um sort of pressure with that, shall we say, but also there comes with a, a real sort of sense of flexibility that when there are things that matter to you personally or, or mean more that you can just drop things at a hat and you can go and see to business pleasure or whatever you need to do so again i think just based on i know it's a long-winded answer we're given here but the flexibility is one that really sort of stands out for, for me absolutely and one other point that i think is uh, is needs clarification of course is that when we are scheduling time away, we certainly do make arrangements with others at the office that would cover and take our calls and look after our work while we are away as well. So yeah. it's not that we're neglecting uh, specific duties yeah. um, that we've made a commitment to. A hundred percent. I, I for, for the listeners out there, I some of you may be thinking, because I, I came from a, a corporate world where I, I worked with a big company and the support resources that you get around that are invaluable, don't get me wrong. But then, so, so for our listeners that are sort of interested in hearing it, 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 it's certainly, there is flexibility, but to your point, 
you do have support system with your brokerage and again all brokerages offer different support mechanisms but with your peers and um your brokerage you 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 are able to sort of create a a sort of support system for your own business and i think that's important to um to call out because for some people they may find that rather sort of overwhelming to think that we don't have the support system so it certainly isn't a matter of you're offending for yourself but um you you do have that flexibility um to sort of do what you need to do when when the time is sort of presents yeah. itself that's awesome and something else that i thought about and that is we also have flexibility in where we do our uh where we do our work yeah. i'm thinking about you know the many times that we are certainly working but we are not physically in the office doing that work. Yeah, yeah. we get to do it from home. You, you've hit the nail on the head, and I, I think that actually leads on to another sort of real positive about having a career in real estate. Is for me personally, you don't have set hours. You're you're always essentially working. So. For the, for the listeners out there, once you get into the industry and you get ramped up, or you're just starting, we've you may have all heard about your sphere of influence that people talk about, and that sphere of influence is essentially your friends, your family, your colleagues, your 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 spouse's friends and family. So inevitably, when you go to family events or friend events, we've just come out of the Christmas holidays, which there's a lot of sort of holiday parties and work parties and. You go there and they're, they're actually social events, but you actually do inevitably put your work hat on and you are working. And it, most people you find that they're very interested in talking about real estate, especially with kind of where we where we sit from a macro level in Canada right now that in today's market. There's a lot of interest and a lot of kind of intrigue as where people think it's going to. Invariably, you end up jumping into work all the time. And for me, that's a positive because... Again, not having that sort of rigidity of working nine to five, Monday to Friday, you can sort of not do anything during the day and take care of your family and friends or your errands or whatever you need to do. But you might go and meet with a family party in the evening and you spend three, four hours talking about work. And, and before you know it, you find that there might be somebody that you can help facilitate a, a move or, or their friends. So that for me is a major positive and something that I really enjoy about our industry and, and the career of real estate. That's awesome. You know, Callum, listening to your comments really points out another awesome benefit. And that is the freedom that we have in our work mm. as, you know, pursuing this awesome career in real estate. We have so much freedom that when I stop and think about the sector that we wish to work in. And if I think about, geez, if I'm interested in the luxury market or the condominium market, residential, uh, commercial, recreational properties, that I have this awesome opportunity to perhaps focus my attention in whatever sector, you know, perhaps appeals to me more so than than others, or perhaps that I'm more comfortable with. And, uh, or, and, and also the freedom of being able to work with people that I choose to work with as well. Yeah, for sure. I think you, you really hit a point there. And, and, and that's one thing for the listeners out there that are, again, not knowing where they are in their sort of real estate careers, if they're just starting out, or they're sort of considering this. The one thing I would say is, me personally, when I thought of real estate, you just, before you're in it, you kind of pigeonhole yourself and go, okay, well, I'm going to sell residential. But what is residential? There's so many different facets of residential. And I ended up carving out a, a nice niche for myself on the new build and pre-construction side, which obviously, as we know, in Canada, in Ontario, that, that's a real uh, a big topic right now, especially from a government standpoint, etc. And I think for the people that are listening out there, it's um, the unknown, may, again, may be sort of daunting for some people, but 
really sort of embrace that that when you get into real estate there are so many different avenues you can take and uh, and again but depending on the time of year or the the time of like the path of your career like that can also change i mean between you and marg you, you probably had a number of different avenues that you've kind of started out and then you've veered off into other areas just based on the way things have gone and Again, that, that sort of lends itself to the flexibility. Hi, Mark. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine, and my apologies. I was trying to get in, and uh, anyhow, I'm here now. So thank you all very much. It sounds like an interesting discussion. And Callum, yeah. that new build for people, there's so many people excited about all of the new designs and new build. And, you know, they see something in someone else's home, and they think, oh, gosh, I'd like something like that. Yeah. And Mary, you guys are just going to have to tell me what you've already mentioned. And if there's something yes. I can add, I will. Thank yeah. you. Well, we were just uh, just finishing up our comments about one of the benefits being the freedom, the freedom that we have to focus our careers on perhaps specific sector or the or working with specific people. That's what we were just wrapping up. Oh, and that's wonderful. And I totally would agree with that. Did anybody talk about some flexible hours to work we, in we leisure did. or to work in family commitments? Did you already speak about that? Yes, we did. So I want we've had about that 20 minutes on the flexibility. I think we've covered pretty much every facet of flexibility. <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful. Well, some of the other things that I would bring when we think about why would someone get into real estate is when they look at their own world, what really are they passionate about? And, you know, Callum, when you said those new builds and we see different housing designs, open concept, and then people getting tired of open concept and let's get some privacy back in here with some rooms and the different types of materials that are used. So are you passionate about showing that to others? But one of the things I always like to talk to people about when they're thinking of getting into this career is if you're the type of person that enjoys helping others. And if you've mentioned it, please stop me, everyone. I do not want to take up anyone else's time about that. No, no, continue, please. That's a good one. It is because I have met so many wonderful people in the real estate um, endeavors and the majority of the people I've met, Callum and Mary, are really great persons. And they tend to want to help the individual that's giving them a business opportunity. And that means helping that person reach their real estate goals. And I'm bringing in the word financial goals for a planning for where can I go as an adult, perhaps providing for a family or providing for a partner or myself? What are my financial goals? But now we're working with others and that issue about helping them get there. I have met tons of people, Mary, that, you know, they get a high of doing a deal for someone where they got them what they wanted or they got them started on the journey. And Callum, I'm sure you must have met that too, where people can come in. And I don't know if the price range you're working in is sometimes for first-time home buyers, maybe not all the time, but maybe the odd time. And when people can get that first sense of ownership, I've seen salespeople really feel wonderful about what they do in life. Now, yeah. this isn't fixing someone's broken leg, but put those helping sides helping issues aside this is helping someone in their financial endeavors and i know lots of people that are thrilled to get into an industry where they have this opportunity and if it interests anybody i can strongly suggest it yeah you, you really hit the nail on the head there i i, I think uh, this might sound a very fluffy answer to, or, or, or on to what you're saying um for me personally, when I got into real estate, I, I'm not going to kid anyone here. The, the thing that really attracted me was kind of the financial opportunity that it can bring. Um, but I think 
for most people, I think you've really hit the nail on the head with that, is you need something more than just monetary value to do a job. And we we have the opportunity to really help people with yeah. a massive decision. Uh, it's, it's arguably one of their biggest decisions in their lives. Yeah. And, and really a good a good real estate transaction, a good real estate decision can really propel somebody financially and everything to their sort of family life and and I think going into real estate when I first started I didn't really appreciate just how much value we can bring outside to somebody other than providing them with a house uh, I think that's a big part that I do get a lot of value from I mean markets are very tough and you, you might end up with a purchaser that has a certain budget that at the beginning, you just don't think they're going to be able to do it. And then when you finally get wine, it, there's so much value and so, so much sort of pride and happiness to sort of have out of that. It, it's it's a great sort of, um, it's a great feeling at the end of it. And we've all had Isn't it nice to hear you say it's a great feeling? And I know, Mary, that with all of your experience, you've had that, even with all of the people that you manage in your brokerage. And yes. hearing a salesperson come in and they help someone get that deal that's it's competitive it's exciting it's um something they might be passionate about and callum on top of it i bet you have met some nice people that perhaps have even continued to be your friends as you've talked told told us many times being new to ontario or you know on canada whatever yeah i certainly think it's an exciting part of this assisting others well, and like you said, it's it's helping people uh, build, you know, their financial um, um, portfolio and, you know, information that we can share with people. It's not just getting that property. It's also, you know, helping people see how they can build their wealth through real yes. estate yes. acquisitions. And I've noticed probably for the past, I'm going to say, good five years, five to seven years, that I have had so many people, so many clients that have come back to me and asking how they can perhaps go ahead and, and uh, perhaps um, build equity uh, to help children to help oh, their children, yeah. to help their grandchildren yes. and and making investments um, that would really reap rewards for children and grandchildren. I've had many conversations with people who were wanting to consider a second property, mm -hmm. sometimes in Ontario, sometimes elsewhere. And they were again, looking for some guidance and, and information that, that I could share with them for them to meet, um, you know, those goals. And Mark, I'm thinking, you know, you must have had many people come to you also, uh, you know, looking for that information. Certainly looking for, you know, that, that extended, and that's how, of course, you build a clientele in the real estate endeavor and so callum's coming in with all of those new home purchases and those people callum are going to be selling at some time and so the cycle begins and they're going to be calling up you callum when it's time for them to sell and these clients are going to think well geez maybe i should buy an investment property but you know when we talk about the reasons to get into real estate we've talked about the flexibility and we're talking here about you know, assisting others and getting the joy of doing that. There's also, if you're passionate about a business operation, Callum, I heard you talk about all of the different types of residential even properties. But what happens if you have been a restaurant owner for many, many years, and now that is not your passion anymore? But boy, oh boy, you know that industry. And you want to come into another endeavor where you can help other restaurant owners sell their business. That's such a niche market. Right. Or looking at all of the legislation, Callum, like you said, with the new homes, 
but looking at all the legislation about protected land and that farmland in Ontario. And do you know people that own that land and how can we assist them in doing it? And I don't want to get into all the particulars, but so many different types of real estate. We've got an opportunity to learn about or to be interested in. So I certainly think, and I'm sure you have all talked about so many things that I would just say exactly the same thing, but certainly the people, certainly the time, certainly the opportunities that are out there and what you are passionate about. And then do you want to get into managing a real estate brokerage and those business opportunities? So. Yeah. And let's uh, think about our day. Uh, it's always changing, right? Our, yes. our, our work that we're doing every day is different. Callum, I'm sure you've noticed that. Marg and I certainly have, uh, and for, for many reasons. So it's uh, um, something that is many times people consider that also a wonderful benefit. You know, yeah, it's not the same thing each and every day. There's great variety. And you're not behind a desk all the time. You yes. get to be outside and, you know, you get to enjoy. I don't know, today it's pretty snowy, mm -hmm. but you get to enjoy the weather and all the rest of it. Yeah. I am I so quick... sorry I was late, everyone. Thank you. No for worries, Mark. So patient. Thank you for joining us anyway. Better late than never. Um, I do have a quick question, maybe two, if, if uh, I can fit them in from audience, uh, from someone from the audience. Um, I know this, this, this course is all about, you know, reasons why to join real estate. Um, but someone asks, um, you know, very popular question we receive all the time, how to find a brokerage after passing, you know, the pre-registration phase of the program. Um, Mary, what do you have to say? Well, I do know that the, the, uh, the real estate salesperson program does address some wonderful guidance on how to find um, a brokerage. But very quickly, what I would say to our, our, our um, participants is, you know, pay attention to where you live and who the, bro uh, which, like, um, who the brokerages are in your area and learn as much as you can about them. Check out their websites, do a quick survey, on your own, you know, when you're meeting with friends and family and ask them if you have, a, if you have, if you had a real estate need today, who would you call and tell me why, please. And so that you could learn a little bit more about them. But certainly when you set up interviews to, um, to meet with the various brokerages that, you know, that interest you, certainly do have questions, um, but take the time to research as much as you can about them. And uh, certainly, you know, check their websites, social media uh, platforms that they have as well, so that, you know, you already know a lot about them. And you can even speak to the salespeople that are at those brokerages to learn more about what um, you know, what draws them and what keeps them at that brokerage as well. So those are a few things that I would share. Perfect. Thank you, Mary. And I will slip in just one more question because we can, why not? Um, so someone says, how long did it take for you to get your first listing or sale? I know you're supposed to have six months worth of savings when starting this career. Marg, I know you like to talk about saving up before, you know, so what do you have to say about that? Um, certainly I would want everyone as they register with a brokerage to plan for their um, mandatory expenses. And if that's with the help of a partner or the monies that you've saved, this is how you will be able to have a smile on your face as you go out for your first endeavors. I was very, very lucky, Matt. Um, people knew I was taking the real estate course they were kind enough to sort of say, Marg, we want to be your first because we all like talking about real estate. We all talked about it. And so as soon as I did achieve my registration um, with the provincial government, then I was able to within probably that first month, I was lucky enough to have certainly my first listing. 
And I can remember everybody. I had these people selling their house and they were buying something else. This was an exciting journey. And I really had all of the basis to know what I was doing. And I started to worry about them. They're spending too much. And then, boy, oh, boy, I learned. Not everybody tells you everything. I had no idea that they had a whole chunk of money that they hadn't told me about. So I learned on the job, and we all do. And we're all going to make some baby steps and then bigger steps and bigger steps. So when the question was, when did you get your first listing, I was very fortunate because people knew I was taking the course. I was talking to everyone about real estate and that I very quickly had my first business opportunity. But for any registrant, I would say after many years of experience of my own, please prepare that you have your own finances um, or your budgeting, your expenses um, in order for at least a couple of months, everyone. And then you can move ahead because of the sporadic payment in real estate. So once again, everyone, I'm sorry I was late. Callum, anything to add to that if you wanted? Yeah, for me personally, it actually took me several months. Um, I, I, it did take me a long time. Um, for people out there, if, you, if you're lucky enough to have like friends and family with timing like similar to, to Mar there, um, that's great. Um, I was kind of coming into it a lot. I didn't know anything. So my approach was I hit as many open houses as possible um now that was through the brokerage um i would like speak to my peers and some t after a couple of, sort of weeks and they saw how i would how i would interact they was fortunate enough to give me some um and actually got my first client through an open house so um again if you don't have like people ready and willing to sort of use you um for their services I would say the big thing is to just make sure you really sort of hit the ground running and put your best foot forward, and that will give you the best opportunity. Awesome. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, thank you to our three, you know, amazing real estate professionals, Mary, Callum, and Marg. Really appreciate your advice and your tips for our audience. Um, make sure everyone keeps up with us on our platforms like YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. Um, to stay informed on when we have our next events coming up, like this, like our real learning quest events like this, and our virtual career conversations events. Um, this was our first event of 2024, so make sure you join us for our upcoming events in the new year. Um, we uh, went through as much as we could today. Thank you for joining. And also, just a quick reminder, we do have our FRS Flex offer that is still available until January 31st, so take advantage of it. Redeem your 20% off discount off of FRS for courses two, three, and four. And if you need any more information regarding that, visit Humber's real estate um, website. And um, again, thank you all for joining and have a great day. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye.